If you've been keeping up with the latest baseball news, you may have noticed that a lot of it's about this World Baseball Classic thing that starts in March. Or, while I doubt you're as excited as I am for this tournament, you too are pumped for the WBC to kick off for the first time in six years. Will Team USA, led by superstars Mookie Betts, Trey Turner, and Mike Trout, among others, repeat as WBC champs? Will DR or Japan reclaim the trophy? We'll get to that and more in this Bleacher Boys Media deep dive video. Before we get to the fun stuff, let's quickly take a look at the history and rules of the event. If you've already religiously watched every WBC highlight compilation video to exist on YouTube and know the format inside and out, you can go ahead and skip this part. The World Baseball Classic is an international baseball tournament that gives us fans a chance to see our favorite players compete for their respective countries. Started in 2006, the WBC had been held every three to four years before COVID unfortunately shut down the 2019 tournament. Japan took home the title in the first two tournaments, led by Japanese-born MLB stars Daisuke Matsuzaka in 06 and Ichiro in 09. In 2013, Robinson Cano won the tournament MVP, helping Dominican Republic win their first WBC, narrowly edging out Puerto Rico in the championship game. In the most recent classic, Team USA finally took home the trophy after beating Puerto Rico in commanding fashion with Marcus Stroman surprisingly taking home MVP honors. Since the last WBC, the rules and formats have slightly changed. In the upcoming WBC, the bracket is made up of four pools, A, B, C, and D, each consisting of five teams. The pool play round, or round one, will be a double elimination round robin, meaning each team will face off against each of the teams in their pool, with the top two teams of each pool advancing to round two, creating a single elimination eight-team bracket. From there, teams will need to win three consecutive games, quarterfinal, semifinal, and final in a span of less than a week to win the tournament. The entire tournament will be played in less than two weeks, a short-term battle, a 100-meter sprint, if you will, of high-intensity, World Series-level atmosphere top-tier competition showcasing the best talent in the world to decide the champion. Now that we know the format, let's go over some rules specific to the WBC. For starters, MLB rules will apply in regards to the three-batter minimum and replay system use. However, there are a bunch of rules and regulations that differ. Pitcher use limits for one. Similar to high school or travel baseball regulations, if a pitcher has thrown over 50 pitches in a single game, he cannot pitch again until a minimum of four days have passed. If a pitcher throws 30 pitches in a game, that same pitcher cannot pitch the next day. No pitcher can throw three consecutive days in any given situation. There are also pitch count limits, 65 pitches for the first round, 80 pitches in the second round, and a 95 pitch count limit in the championship rounds. There will also be no limits on mound visits, so yes, expect quite a few more manager and pitching coach trolls to the mound. The new MLB rules which include the pitch clock, bigger bases, limitations on pickoffs, and ban of infield shifting will not be in use. I recommend really enjoying watching Manny Machado play short right field because this will be the last time you'll ever see it happen. While the WBC is an exciting tournament, it's not without its risks, and these rules are in place in hopes to lower the risk of injury, especially serious arm injuries to pitchers who are key pieces on MLB teams eyeing a world championship in October. It is understandable that MLB front office members, coaches, and managers will be holding their breath as their ace competes on one of the brightest stages baseball has to offer in March, a time when players usually slowly ramp up under palm trees and sunny blue skies in spring training. Alright, now that that's out of the way, let's get to the teams and players. According to most power rankings and Vegas' betting odds, there are three true contenders for the title. That is, odds on favorite the Dominican Republic, USA, and Japan. Following these three countries, there is quite a steep drop off the next tier of teams which include Puerto Rico, Venezuela, and Mexico. The DR with MLB stars up and down the roster rightfully comes in as favorites at plus 200 odds to win the tournament. Their team is absolutely stacked every which way you slice it. There are six legit stars in Rafael Devers, Manny Machado, Wander Franco, Vladdy Jr., Jeremy Pena, and Willie Adamas competing for the four infield positions, not to mention other solid MLB players in Cattell Marte, Gene Segura, and Nelson Cruz looking at more of a bench role for the tournament. There are also four more than qualified outfielders, Teoscar Hernandez, Juan Soto, Julio Rodriguez, and Eloy Jimenez vying for playing time. I mean, just take a look at this projected starting lineup. Their pitching is not too far behind either, spearheaded by reigning NL Cy Young, Sandy Alcantara, followed by Christian Javier, Johnny Cueto, and Ronzi Contreras of the Pirates. The pitching took a bit of a hit when Framber Valdez and Luis Severino backed out of the tournament, but their offense and electric arms in the pen should be enough to make a deep run. On to the reigning champs, Team USA. 
Again, a team star-studded with MLB All-Stars up and down the lineup, starting off on the right side of the infield, reigning NL MVP Paul Goldschmidt and Polar Bear Pete, who finished second in NL home runs, will cover first base and DH duties. Oh, by the way, the guy who led the NL in home runs, you ask? That'd be Kyle Schwarber, who'll probably be a pinch hit option late in games against righties. Team USA manager Mark DeRosa will have former batting title winners Tim Anderson and Jeff McNeil to choose from at second base, with the left side of the infield being pretty much locked up by Trey Turner and Nolan Arenado, with a sprinkle of Bobby Wood Jr. if DeRosa so desires. You think that's pretty good? The outfield gets even better. USA will trot out some combination of Mookie Betts, Mike Trout, Kyle Tucker, and Cedric Mullins to man the three positions. Behind the plate, Skip Dero will have three all-star caliber catchers to choose from in JT Romuto, Will Smith, and Kyle Higashioka all on the roster for the tournament. The pitching side of things is where it gets a bit dicier with this team, with guys like Nestor Cortez and Clayton Kershaw backing out. But with a more than formidable bullpen consisting of guys like Devin Williams, Ryan Presley, David Bednar, and others, if the starters of Wainwright, Singer, and Lance Lynn can get you through 3-5 to five innings, this shouldn't be too big of an issue. Finally, the two-time WBC champs and the last of the true contender trio is Team Japan. Full disclosure, I am Japanese and this will be the team I'll be rooting for heavily, but I'll try my best to keep any biases aside. I can go on for a while talking about how great some of the guys are on this team, but I don't want to bore you with players you've probably never heard of, so let's just hit some of the main key players. Obviously, Japan will rely heavily on their MLB players, which include Otani, Darvish, Seiya Suzuki, Lars Nootbaar, and Masataki Yoshida who signed with the Red Sox this past offseason. Those were some names you've probably heard of or know about, so let me give you guys a few names to remember, superstars in Japan who are not yet known in the States, but I can see having a huge impact in this WBC. Starting pitcher Roki Sasaki is the first name. A 21-year-old phenom that consistently touches triple digits on the radar gun threw a perfect game last summer and followed that up in his next start with an additional 8 perfect innings. A high pitch count and a concerned manager were the only roadblocks standing in the way of Sasaki making quite the historic feat. The guy has absolutely electric stuff, and it'll be interesting to see how Japan decides to utilize his talent with talks of potentially using him out of the bullpen in the later rounds. The second name to remember is Yoshinobu Yamamoto. Yes, I understand these Japanese names aren't too easy to remember, but knowing these names going into the WBC will maximize your viewing enjoyment, and who knows, some of these guys might be pitching for your favorite MLB team in a couple years. Yamamoto is by far the best pitcher in the MPB right now. The two-time reigning Saomura Award winner, equivalent to MLB's Cy Young Award, will be a huge part of Japan's rotation, which I believe to be the best rotation in this year's tournament. He boasts a career ERA of under 2 at 1.95, throwing close to 200 innings the past two seasons while striking out over 200 batters in just 26 games started. A rotation of Darvish, Otani, Yoshinobu Yamamoto, and Roki Sasaki is one hell of a group that'll give the best lineups in the world a nightmare. The last guy to keep an eye on is the lefty slugger who this past season broke the MPB single season home run record and won the triple crown, Munetaka Murakami. The 23-year-old broke out in 2019 hitting 36 home runs, driving in 96 runs at the age of 19. Since then, he has been one of, if not the best hitter in Japan and a guy that has MLB scouts drooling over the possibility of adding him to their lineup. His 2022 stat line is just out of this world insane. As I mentioned before, these three teams are considered favorites to win the 2023 WBC and for very good reason, but I can't end this video before I give you an underdog team that could potentially give one of the top three teams fits and have a chance to shock the world. My dark horse sleeper team to watch is Colombia in Pool C. USA, Canada, and Mexico may be favored over Colombia in this pool, but I believe Colombia has some underrated talent on their team that can get hot and take a couple games to come out of Phoenix and advance to Miami. Some notable names include MLB players Gio Urshela, Donovan Solano, Harold Ramirez, and Oscar Mercado on the offensive side. Dayan Frias is also a name to keep an eye on an electric young shortstop prospect for the Guardians who is coming off a scorching hot stretch in the Caribbean series. They also have a couple MLB arms on their pitching staff in Jose Quintana and Raver San Martin of the Reds, along with a bunch of guys with super high upside and exceptional stuff MLB fans may not be aware of yet. This is a dangerous team that teams like Canada, USA, and Mexico should circle in Pool C. There are definitely other teams outside of these teams I've mentioned that have a chance to make some noise in this tournament, especially with it being single elimination after the first round. As you know very well, anything can happen in a one-game winner-take-all scenario. Most of these teams in this tournament have compiled a competitive roster that even the top teams shouldn't overlook. Comment below which matchup you're looking forward to the most. Is it the clash of the two best players from the Angels, Otani vs. Trout? As a Yankee fan, I can't wait to see Loizaga vs. Higashioka at bat. 
This short-term tournament should bring out the best of its players, and we should see some high-intensity games being played in front of the most passionate fans in the world. The excitement and anticipation for the 2023 World Baseball Classic is at an all-time high and at levels we've never seen before. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it somewhat informative, and if I've got one of you to be excited as I am for this tournament, I've done my job. Thanks for watching, and if you want to see more WBC content, leave a like and hit that subscribe button. That'll be the best way to show your support.